Minnesota Makoche by Dr. Bruce White and Dr. Gwen Westerman is an award-winning book on Minnesota history. Dr. White recently visited the Native Report studio, where I had the opportunity to interview him. This book was a collaborative effort. Uh, could you tell us how the book came about in the first place? In 2007, a group of Dakota people came to me and asked me if I would help them work on a project to study the history of Dakota people in Minnesota and their relationship to the land. And many Dakota people are somewhat frustrated by the fact that there's not a lot of understanding that Minnesota is really a Dakota place. Uh, we got a grant, we gathered people together to work on it, including my co-author Gwen Westerman, who's a professor at um, and Cato State University, and uh, we worked for several years gathering information, and then in 2010 we got a grant from the Minnesota Historical Society to write the book. We had a team that scoured the archives um, for maps, journals, uh, historical documents. My team um, was responsible for oral history interviews, and we uh, interviewed Dakota people from practically every reserve in Canada and all of the Dakota reservations in Minnesota and Nebraska, North South Dakota and Montana. I think what's more important about Minnesota Makoche is that it's from a Dakota perspective. It's been a long process, but all of the people that we've worked with have continued you know, continued working with us, and the book came out in 2012. And you said that you found a, uh, a treaty that was written uh, in the Dakota language, and you had it retranslated. And so what was, how, what was that process, and what, what did you find out after that you retranslated it? Yeah, that's one of the most famous treaties is the Treaty of 1851, which was uh, the treaty that's said to have, you know, essentially transferred ownership to the land of the entire southern Minnesota region. But the point of this chapter is that Dakota people had a very particular meaning to their understanding of the land, that land was a relative in a sense. So to try to understand how they could sign a treaty that would give away their connection to the land is is important to try to understand that. So I think it, Gwen was looking in in some source and found that there was a Dakota language version of the 1851 treaty translated by one of the missionaries for the purpose of then presenting that to the Dakota because the treaty was written in English. I was amazed to see that there were whole sections that had not even been translated. So what does it mean in Dakota to say, you know, you're selling the land to the federal government? What, how do you even translate that? So they had to pick a term in English that could somehow convey that. They said, to throw away the land. And, you know, that's mind boggling because it's so contrary to the way that Dakota or any other native people of that region would have viewed the idea of, you know, how can you throw away a relative if the land is your relative? You know, I think ultimately you have to despair and say, there really wasn't a way to translate this. And perfect understanding was not possible for the Dakota people. And it's rare, I, I think, to find a treaty in the language of the people who signed it because that was not done routinely. And you would might see in a treaty negotiation where somebody says, well, it was a, explained to them, but then you would not know how it was explained to them. And you also rediscovered some very old maps. And what was the significance of the, some of the French well, maps yeah, and others? A, one of the most interesting maps I, I recall is the, the map of, Jean-Baptiste Franquelin, who was a French map maker of the 17th century. And one of the sites in particular that's really interesting is Mille Lacs Lake. They did know that it was a Dakota 
place and it was called Bede Wakan, which means sacred lake, mysterious lake. And the first, or the, one of the important bands of the Dakota is the Bede Wakan Tuan, meaning the people of the sacred lake. And they, they were people that uh, when the French first came, they were living on the shores of what is now known as Mille Lacs. I'm a typical Minnesotan. Why do I want to read this book? My hope is that, that you, like many people, would read the book. I mean, I, I say that many people because people have told me this, that they, some, some people read the book and they say they had no idea. They had no idea first that Minnesota is a Dakota place. Dakota people named it. They had no idea of this whole and thing. Somebody at the Historical Society said to me, I feel like I have to walk more carefully now on this land because it's not my land. And I would hope that people would have that sense of understanding after reading the book. Thank you so much, Dr. White. Thank you. It's been my pleasure.